Right over here at uh, my place. And this is Darren, his cousin, Dio. How you going, bro? Hey, bro. All good? All good. Dio is um, from Thailand. And uh, he's going to show us how to make charcoal. Charcoal's a big thing over there. And basically how they... You know, one of their main energy sources on the rice farms up north. And... Uh, yeah, while I was away in the Canning stock route, away five weeks, they made a big pile of their own charcoal. So, uh, yeah, he wanted to get in the show us how to do it. I think, well, you can buy charcoal and we sell a lot of it, but pretty cool to learn how to do it yourself. So, there's two ways to do it, or several ways, but uh, Dio's going to show us um, his, a couple of ways. So, as you can see, this is just an old, this is my woodshed here. Wood have got to cut up and you see it there, piles of wood I'm cutting up. So this here is just all the rubbish pile, you know, for rotten wood or bark or sticks that fall from the from the trees, bark and everything. So this is just our little burn pile, cardboard boxes. Um, so just all ash really. And uh, anyway, I'll see what Dio does. I think he made a heap while we're away, which was out of this material, out of this wood. And that's just some um, big um, grey box, which was out the front. I've done a bit of road work out the front and there's a couple of massive grey box, which is those there. There was four of them cut down. And uh, That's them here. Still pretty green. You can see the bark's only just starting to come off. So we've just really see that. I think it's a grey box. Um, very heavy. Uh, but it was it was a live tree when it was cut down about three four months ago. We split some of it, trying to let it dry out, and we'll sort of burn that. Uh, ideally, burn that next year. Um, but that's what I think he's been using, so we'll see. Toddy, come and explain it. <laughs> so what's going on, Toddy? Can you explain it? Oh, what's going on, video? อันนี้ก็อันให้ทั้งอากาศให้มันไหลดีๆเป็นยังต้องต้องไงต้องต้องกดตรงนี้ให้อากาศมันไหลไอ้ไหลดีให้ yeah, right. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. So just a few bits of timber there yeah. to cover that air gap. Yeah. For if you put a timber on is this will block the air for yeah. yeah. Alright. Beautiful day, clear skies, it's nice. chance too to uh, show you my little pine tree collection and uh, these are beautiful trees at pines I love the radiata this is just radiata and you can buy them from Sydney or a nursery like a state forest nursery and they only cost a couple of dollars each you get a tray like this uh, for about 80 bucks so I think it's about two dollars each but the radiata grows very quick and I just love the smell of them you know good timber you can use it if you want you can mill it yourself so um, I've got about 
100 of them here and I've planted about 80 also out around the place so yeah this is my new also carbon feeds trees t-shirt look at that so you know a lot going on about carbon and it's all that's talked about these days but at the end of the day I don't know if many people realize that you know trees or timber is, is just pure carbon you know and like these trees this will end up you know that's a uke but that'll end up several tons of, uh, of of matter and weight you know that that doesn't come from the ground you know I mean you get nutrients from the ground but the bulk of what you see in the timber is just carbon and it, and it's sucking that atmosphere that carbon out of the atmosphere through the process of photosynthesis and um, you know that's what creates trees so literally um, carbon feeds trees you know that's a scientific fact you know so uh, you know they try to portray carbon as a poison almost you know it's like oxygen you know and uh, without carbon all life on earth will vanish you know it's one of the most besides oxygen carbon something that we all need and without it um, we can't live and it's only 0.04 percent of the atmosphere anyway but uh, you know when you look at things like we're going to make charcoal now but when you look at things like oil and natural gas and and coal well that's created so they tell us from huge forests and swamps that have sort of fallen down and swamp upon swamp and pushed down and the pressure has created oil coal and natural gas I mean that's what we were taught in school but that's all that carbon that's absorbed from the atmosphere such enormous forests that was so thick that they all went down we've got nothing on the earth at the moment like that could could create coal or natural gas we, we don't have any forests so thick that they could you know form this coal and natural gas so but that's what it was these enormous deposits of coal or natural gas around the world were created from these incredible uh, swamps and forests and for them to create that the carbon obviously had to be far higher in the past to create all that you know so where, where did all this carbon that we're, we're digging up for coal oil and natural gas where did it come from it come from the atmosphere so in a way if we dig it up and burn it we're putting it back we're not contributing to more carbon in the atmosphere we're putting back the carbon that was there before I mean, how is that not a scientific fact you know but of course there's agendas going on and um you know if you care for the environment and a few people said to me, like, Luke, you know, you look like you're sort of a bushy and you love the environment. Why are you saying things like this, carbon feeds trees? Like, I love the environment, I love trees, but I would have called myself a greenie years ago, but everything shifted to the left. You know, the greenies have become communists, you know, that's how it's gone. Everything's gone so far to the left. And at uh, the end of the day, if you care for the environment and you want to do something to help, these trees not just suck, uh, not just suck carbon out of the atmosphere, but they create oxygen as well and that's what trees do you know so if you want to do anything to help get a bunch of trees and plant them you know as everybody can do that doesn't matter where you live if you're on a balcony in a high-rise apartment in sydney you can plant some trees in in pots you know you could do this on the balcony if you wanted to let them grow and give them away plant them out in the forest do whatever you like you know but these little radiata grow fast and again i just love the uh love the smell of the radiata because uh you know, i've been in america a lot and that beautiful pine smell and uh, they're a clean tree too, you know, they don't drop big branches, um, they don't drop a lot of bark, like these um, grey gums, you know, they keep dropping a lot of bark and stuff on the ground, And whereas the radiata are just a beautiful, easy tree, they grow fast, and some of them down the back here, they're starting to die, they've been here about 30 years, and a few of them are dying off, so I want to replant, and I'm going to put hundreds, now, I've got five acres here, and I'm going to put hundreds of these radiata trees, you know, so, um, Anyway, a bit of a talking point. Carbon feeds trees, and that's a fact. All right, Dio, what's happening, mate? It's fine, just a bag of wood. Ah, uh, so you got to stack it so you got the airflow. So you got to stack it with a bit of airflow. And this wood toddy, it's not fully dry, eh? Like, um, it it's not fully dry, eh? It's only cut it just cut four, five months ago? Yeah, yeah, four, five months ago. I just split 
Hmm. Hello, Darren. Hey. How you going? Good. Oh. Oh yeah, there's the chimney. Professional audio. Charcoal professional. This is Goy Goy. <laughs> Dear's wife. How are you Goy Goy? Yeah. Good? Good. You know what he's doing, Toddy? Yeah. yeah. Does he know what he's doing? Ah, I think he's a professional. Yeah. Expert charcoal. <laughs> Tomorrow in the morning, we got fresh charcoal. Yeah. Mm. It should tie in the bush too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take a sheet of iron. We gotta put that iron on, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Can you do this, Danny? No. Why not? I don't try. You can try. Oh. Oh, 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 man. Oh, yeah. well, I'm really fascinated how it does it. I've always wanted, when I'm in Thailand, I wanted Downey to show us or her uncle, but haven't been shown. But yeah, I think it's so interesting. I mean, how do you literally make, I mean, a lot of people in Australia don't even know what charcoal is, you know. We know heat beads, but you know, charcoal is literally carbonized wood. It's, it's got pretty much all the moisture taken out of it but to do that you've got to burn it in the absence of oxygen so yeah interesting so we got all this stacked up see stack carefully so you get airflow chimney Jamie's come around to say good day how are you Jamie Hello. we're making charcoal <laughs> charcoal lessons That's what he made before, last week. Yeah, so that's that timber there, right? Yeah, that's timber. Yeah. Mm. So, Dio, any, anybody can do this, eh? Yeah, yeah. You reckon Aussies easy. can do it? Yeah, too easy. easy. Too easy. Yeah? Too easy. <laughs> too easy, bro. <laughs> One sec, dear. Sorry, one sec. This here, what's what's this for? Yeah, you got a little. Blue side by side, lah. get a fight on this. Yeah. So just start. Start fight. Yeah, but it's not a lot of not a lot of timber there, is there to burn? Yeah. You should take like a twelve hour to burn all of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's why it's, you don't need to too much too yeah. much fire. And Dio is he's YouTube star, isn't he? Yeah, he's YouTube star. He's got his own channel. Yeah. Uh, one day. What's your channel, bro? Uh good day, mate. Huh? Good day, good day mate. Good day, mate. Yeah. Is it? Good day, mate. Is that his Yeah. Good day, mate. Good day, mate. That's your channel. So, so now we've got a this, it's ideal, isn't it? This ash here. Well, it can be just dirt, can't it? Yeah, yeah. No, mate. Yeah. Oh, mud. Mud. Yeah. Mix, mix with water better. Yeah. We, we use mud and mix with water. Uh, so yeah. the air, air can't come in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Basically got the iron over the top and 
then we just got to um, airproof it, you know. But on this end here, you see we've got the. Oh yeah, look. This is um, that's a bit of my pine pitch, so that's going to burn real easy. We've got a bit of that pine pitch there. So you've got to light that fire there. And that'll spread through. And um, yeah, we'll see. covered that so a chimney at the end a block at the front iron over the top there's a channel for the air right through Got a bit of kindling a bit of plywood kindling and this is just on my old fire scrap heap you know I've got to get a fire going. Toddy, this much, this much charcoal, we'll be able to fill what three, or four bags, probably four bags, uh, you reckon? No. Two or three bags. Two bags, yeah. Two bags, yeah. Two bags, two bags. And that's enough for, well, a fair bit, isn't it? Yeah, a month. A month at least. In Thailand, like Theo's like, he's a man, isn't he? He can do everything, eh? Yeah, <laughs> he's handy, man. He's the man who does everything. The man from the bush. Yeah. <laughs> You've been catching a lot of fish lately too, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? yeah. Catching any fish or what? Yeah. What sort of fish? <laughs> big fish. <laughs> big fish and beam. Brim? Brim? Big yeah. brim. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. Brim. <laughs> yeah. The boys been out nearly every afternoon going fishing over at Foster and Nelson Bay. Starting to smoke. So, Toddy, you were saying that it, you want the wind going in the, this direction. In that way, yeah. yeah, so you don't want the wind blowing down the chimney. No, it's not good. Yeah. So, better than like a good spot, like a not windy you know? yeah, yeah it's just we don't need windy but just one smoke go go out that way yeah yeah how long do you have to leave it like this to burn like wait for that fire to go uh, through just if you can see the fire in there like uh, uh, the timber get a just a little bit fire gun in there you can yeah so you wait till it, it starts burning yeah start burning a little bit and yeah <coughs> that's good to go and just just leave it there yeah, like right. Yeah. <clears throat> the boys are just getting the blower into it. What we're going to try and do is get this um, 
wood in here burning. So once it starts burning the, the main wood, and you saw Dia put a bit of sort of kindling on top and there's also the stuff underneath. So we want that start burning. Once we see that, we can cover this up. So a blower's ideal for that just to, just to get that going. So you can see that it's burning in there. That's all you want. So the kindling here at the front sort of all used up, a few coals, but it's burning inside there. And that's what we wanted to achieve. Right to go? Uh, that's why a bit, a bit more. A bit more. So, sort of going, but Dio sure wants to let that burn for half an hour. Yeah, just make sure. I yeah, you got to get that heat in there, eh? Yeah. What are we trying to do? Get the heat, heat build up in there? Yeah, just make sure the make sure the wood burn. Yeah. So the wood's got, got to burn. Yeah, we got this, got a hard, just a hard wood in there. Yeah. 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 All right, we'll leave that for half an hour and then we'll close it up. You got silver perch in there. Damn. Show you some of my little trees. You know, these little fellas. So they've been there about 12 months. And look at them go. Doing real good. When they're nice and dark green, that's what you want to see. You know, this is ready to grow again. There's some sprouting here. But you can see the nice dark green. I've got them all around the place. Those four are going well. Yes, yeah, so I've got some planted over there, some here, and uh, I'm just putting at the moment in the process of putting manure from the horses. There's the horses over there, the stables. So the wood chip and the horse manure. I um, put it around the trees. See that? So I'm just in the process of putting some there now. So a little forest there. Yeah, got a few planted here. And yeah, these poor old fellas are getting a bit old and starting to die. Look at these little beauties. Look at that. Yeah, a couple there. That's what you want to see, some nice growth. Beautiful dark green. Yeah, so these I reckon are around 30 years old from counting the, uh, the rings on them. So there used to be a big one just over there I cut down, another one in the garden, a big one here the other day, um, a couple up over the back there. So I've probably had to cut down half a dozen big dead ones, you know. I mean, these are not massive, but they're 20 metres high. But this one here is a beautiful tree, but it's it's starting to die. And I, I think it's just old age, really. Um, not much more that I think would be killing them. We've had plenty of water. Um, but the drought certainly killed a lot of them. And, but look at the rest of them, they're thriving, you know. So, yeah, I'm going to cut this one down soon. And uh, you can see this. Well, it's hard to see, but there's a little bit of green at the top. Otherwise, it's dead. Now, I reckon I'll get some good timber out of that. 
Let me massage that one. And that's going to be, you know, about, that's about 600. So after the bark, say 500, and I'll get some good, some good um, logs out of that. I'll be able to cut that into sort of um, sections like this. That's the one I've milled up. See that? So this is the end of it. So that's no good, but I made a nice seed out of it. I'll be able to slab that in some nice um, pine slabs. Yeah, something about the pines, just you know, the wind. I love the wind through the pines, the smell of them. Just a beautiful tree. I know they're not native to Australia, but you know, basically I've got all the ukes up there. It's a lot of them, see that? They're all here when I when I came. And I've planted several trees as well. Mum's had a farm, they've just sold it actually, but out at Rambang and the Orange and yeah, Mum, she used to some beautiful big yellow box, I'll show you up here, some yellow box and red gum. Yeah, Mum used to go and collect the seeds, like massive, there's a massive yellow box there, it'd be at least 200 years old on the property, and a beautiful old tree. Mum's collected the seeds and, and uh, propagated them and you know, I've got a few of those trees, so I've got some red gum and some yellow box from mum's place and uh, there's a couple up there as well so I love the ukes you know I'm Australian I love the eucalypt trees I love the smell of those but so that's my uke forest up there and this is my pine forest down here uh, but yeah as they die out you know if one dies I'm gonna plant ten you know and um, you know you hear all these people whinging and carrying on about carbon Well, if they're living in the city and they've got a balcony, you can have literally a hundred of these little fellas. You know, grow them up and then go and plant them. Or make it ukes, whatever you like. You can't see your local nursery. I mean, it's no good whinging. You know, they're blocking the streets. You see that a lot. Blocking the streets and being stupid. Well, Go and plant some trees. I mean, all them people you see, you know, we haven't seen block streets in Australia yet, but we're going to. In America and in Europe, lying down on the road. Look at these fellas. How many of those people have gone and planted a tree? I can probably almost guarantee you that none of them have planted any trees in their lives. Like at Drifter, I planted over 300 trees and they're all growing. I've been there 20 years and there's a forest there all around the edges. You know, I literally could have built bigger factories if I didn't plant so many trees. Right, little fella. I just, yeah, you gotta stake them up with a bit of bamboo. Plenty of um, sawdust and manure. Make sure you don't, you know, they're not rotted around the base. And, uh, but yeah, how many of them plant trees? This little fella. He's, he's not much good. Unfortunately, when I had the excavator in here to dig all this out, uh, the, the exhaust from the excavator burnt this one. I was hoping he might come back, but I don't think so. But I'll, um, I'll replace him soon. Give him a bit of a chance, and if he doesn't come good. This is my little bamboo forest. Bamboo's another brilliant, you know, carbon. Uh, sink you know they're talking about carbon capture they're trying to invent machines and things that capture carbon like invent you know how do we capture carbon well this is how you do it just this little cubby house from party had a bunch of little kids there three four years old and I made them a little cubby house they let them have a fire and they loved it couldn't get them out of there. But look at that. So these are all, these are going to be 10, 12 metres high, these bamboo. Right. And I love bamboo. Look at that. It's going to be, look at that, large. 12 metres tall. I mean, these are only fresh little buggers, but these are going to go off. 
And there's so many things you can use bamboo for. You know, you can use it for, well, look what they do in Hong Kong and China. They build huge skyscrapers out of, out of the bamboo. It's an incredible material and everybody should be planting bamboo. Cause it sucks the carbon real quick, you know. If you're worried about too much carbon, it's got the barbed wire here because the horses love, they love the bamboo, so just got to put that barbed wire back, stop them getting in there. But yeah, you know, anyone can plant trees. And rather than whinge and carry on, what you can do with bamboo. You know, it's great for the garden. Oh, I make so many things out of bamboo. See that? Here I've got some, the beans are done, but look at these snow peas, hey. I'm just hanging that off the, this bamboo trellis. So this is bamboo that I planted a drifter about 10 years ago, and look at the size of it. Some of these were 8, 10 metres, look at that, and these are all bamboo that I've cut myself. I've got a fair bit of bamboo going. This is, um, look at this, see? The soil needs carbon. And this is um, pine shavings. All right, and I've got the horse manure. All right, so really important to have, so putting carbon back in the soil is really important. So I put a lot of sawdust on the soil here. And, you know, I just keep packing the sawdust on over and over and over. The other thing I use the sawdust for is this is all from the chook from the chook shed. See, that's full of chook manure, wee and poo. Here's the chookies down here. Yeah, chookies. See that? So all of the that's pure carbon. See that? All the sawdust. So I rip up, rip up all the hardwood, softwood, whatever. That's a mixture of uh, red gum and uh, radiata and right so that you're going to get pure nitrogen all through that carbon right and then you put it here then you that's acting as mulch i mean mulch is so important because the mulch keeps the heat out if you if, if you let your soil dry out the, the sun just kills it. it kills all the microorganisms at the end of the day you got it. It's all about the microorganisms in your soil, and uh, you know. So you've got to have thick mulch, you know, all over everywhere, and um, keeps the water in. And then you get that nitrogen from the chook manure, the carbon from the sawdust, getting into that soil, promotes a healthy soil. Get your microorganisms going. Ready to cut? Yeah, ready to close up? Yeah. Alright mate. Well there you go, I've learned something today. Hope you have as well and I did not. I sort of roughly knew how to do it. I knew I knew the process but I've never seen it done. How to do it so we'll end up we'll build a proper proper clay oven because we got to build this each time see pull it apart get the wood out the charcoal out but and then the charcoal's all mixed with you know the, the, the dirt but we'll build a proper oven somewhere and then we can do this anytime we like trees for mum's place. That's a little red gum. So um, 
one of the biggest, most oldest, most beautiful red gums on the property out at Rambang. Mum would have um, propagated those seeds. I think that's another one. I'm not sure what this one is. It's um, not doing too well, but well, that's probably. I don't know. It must be a yellow box. Look at that. <clears throat> that looks like a yellow box. Um, it's sort of I'm not going real good at the top here, but. Once it gets going, th th these ukes sort of take four or five years to struggle along and then they just shoot off. You know, then they just go. Another red gum. Uh, someone might pull me up, but I think that's another red gum. Mostly at mum's place is yellow box and red gum. I don't know what that is. That's not a yellow box. The yellow box got a very small, a small, small thin leaf. Um, yeah, it's just some pencil pines right around the top. And then I've got radiata right across the top there and down the drive. Beautiful afternoon. So if you've got a lazy Sunday, you know, you could do this. You're going to close it right off or that's it? Yeah. Let it go a bit more? Uh, leave, leave, uh, leave for air four. Yeah? A little bit, yeah. You don't close it off? No. <coughs> Yeah, right, that's it, eh? Yeah. So you have to leave a little bit there? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> that's it. I didn't know that. I thought you close it right off, but no. No. Okay. Right, that's it, eh? What are you drinking? What are you drinking? Water. That's <laughs> 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 Tui's new. That's good, bro. Cheers, mate. You like Tui's? Tui's good beer? Uh, good. Yeah? yeah, you make beer too, don't you? You make beer, kabia, huh? Uh, I, I, yeah, I make uh, kabia, kabia, yeah, ale in Thailand, yeah, in Thailand. Better than this? No, uh, different, different, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thailand's got good beer, eh? Good, Chang and Chang, Leo, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite Thai beer? Leo, Are you Leo man or Chang man? You like so, Leo or Chang? What What do you like? Uh, Le Le Leo. Leo. Yeah. All, right. All Thai are either Leo or Chang, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and whiskey. You make Thai whiskey, don't, don't you? Thai whiskey. You make whiskey? No, no. no. Never. Yeah. You make beer. But Thai drink a lot of whiskey, don't they? Thai, Thai men drink a lot of whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. For breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> don't they? I've seen you drink for breakfast. You know, at, at a wedding in Thailand, me and Darren got married. Everybody's drunk on whiskey at 7 o'clock, <laughs> wouldn't they? Yeah? 40, 40 degree. <laughs> 40 percent whiskey. 40 percent. They're drinking at 7 o'clock in the morning and down his 10 uncles when we were getting married. The wedding was at 9 o'clock in the morning and by 7 o'clock they're all drunk. So how about that? That was funny. Hey bro. <laughs> That's it. Well done. Yeah. I, did, I thought you closed it right off, but you got to leave like that. Bit something there. Yeah, just leave like that. Yeah. Hey, champ. Hello. How you going, bro? Good. How are you, bro? Good, mate. Maybe shark or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, how long is that going to take? Uh, one night. Yeah, one, one night. night. 24 hours. 24 hours. So, tomorrow afternoon we can open it. Yeah. Yeah? At the same time. Yeah, okay. 24 hours. All right. That's we'll it. See you tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> what do you say? So tomorrow, 
tomorrow morning that smoke has to be changed color yeah has to be blue blue color blue in color the morning, in the morning yeah, yeah. Okay. and so if no smoke like a not at all that means it's done yeah we can open them and okay. get the charcoal in no 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 uh hot the one now pit gun i pit that guy is moving you see tomorrow oh if no smoke have to be like a hot or that like a non air in there oh, okay and why until next day yeah right we can open the, the oven yeah yeah Oh, I will see you tomorrow, eh? Oh. Very good. So it's just sort of quietly burning away. Yeah. Yeah, so here's a little forest. Look at this. So the... Got some new growth happening. This is a uh, tree I got from a friend's place. Uh, Tim Parker, my mate, he's done the high country trip with us and his mum had this tree in the backyard. It was enormous, I don't know, some sort of redwood. Oh, anyway, this is a little suckling that was growing in the backyard at um, Mount Fitzgerald near Blaney. And the tree, the, the mother was, the mother tree was probably a hundred years old. So this is a pretty cool tree for me. There's um, one of my best mates, Tim Parker, is from his mum, and I've known his mum, Sybil, all the life. Here's another one, we got two from that. So a bit slow growing, I've had it 12 months, but they're going good. This little one here died, but um, see that he sprouted again, so I'm gonna give him a chance. Uh, this one, see, he died a bit. But yeah, good to see him going well. These are a heap of, uh, what are they called? Oh, I can't remember now. Some of them know. I'll think of it in a sec. Oh, look at that little bit of growth. Look at that. Powering. Teak, yeah, that's what it is. These are teak, sorry. So these are a good tree. There's eight of those and you know, plant them up the top. A really valuable timber, the teak, and well, we're not going to really get that as a cash crop or something we can sell, but why not, you know? Why not plant a beautiful tree? Here's some more of mum's. We've got one there, one here, another one of mum's. A uh, little oak there. I can't remember where I got that from. Yeah, I've got a ton of pots here. So, a few bamboo left over and I trimmed, trimmed a heap of bamboo off at the top um, we got some bamboo next to the house I trimmed them off and I planted them in again and they'll, they should sprout See that? I didn't want to get them over the roof so I've just trimmed them off stuck them in there and that, that will grow you know and I'll have new bamboos so a couple of bamboo there and some bamboo here bamboo here And then this is my little hedge. And then look at these fellas. I don't know what makes them grow like from you know that's only six, seven hundred high to something that's um sixteen hundred high. Look at that. Nearly as high as me, that fella. I mean, watching trees grow gives you, you know, I walk through these nearly every day, just come and say good day to them all. See how they're doing, you know? This is my um, front driveway. Yeah, <clears throat> one thing I've learned, this is very clay soil over here, it's all clay, heavy clay. On this side, it's edge of the road, so that when I dug the holes here, it's all gravel. 
And look at the trees. These ones here are well over six foot high. And these are only about three to four foot high. So what that tells you is these trees love love gravel, you know. They don't like the they don't like, don't like wet feet, they don't like the clay. And when you see some of the the ground where they're growing pine trees, it's pretty rough, rocky sort of territory, you know. So look at that. These ones are powering. Pocket sways right here. It's a bit noisy but Look at this fella, this is my champion, he's the king. Look at him, he's a good seven foot tall, he's an inch. And the smell from this is just beautiful. And he's powering, powering away. Doing his job, sucking the carbon out of the atmosphere, transferring it into timber through the process of photosynthesis. Pumping out oxygen. Look at that. So I'll trim this one off later because it'll grow out on the on the drive. Trim a few of these off, but <clears throat> yeah, you know. If you love your planet and you love your people, you love the environment. Plant some trees, you know. And learn learn the facts too, you know. I mean, seriously, do they teach do they teach school kids that this is a carbon capture factory? Do they teach them that? They don't. They're not teaching them that. Kids kids think carbon is poison because they're taught that in schools. They're not taught that this is a. I mean, it's it's a cycle of life, you know. And they need to be taught the truth that the more carbon we have, you know what happens? These trees grow quicker. These trees will literally grow quicker, right? That's a fact. And that's, you know, greenhouses pump carbon dioxide into the greenhouses to make things grow quicker, right? If there's, if there's more carbon in the atmosphere, these trees will literally grow faster. Because it's a cycle, it's a closed loop system. It's a, it's a, we're a closed loop, we're a closed loop system. And if there's more carbon put in the atmosphere, then more carbon will get sucked into the trees and they'll grow quicker. So what you need to do is plant bloody trees. And why not plant some radiata? Beautiful things, grow quick, smell awesome. And they're just good pals, you know? Anyway. All right, so we're back here at the charcoal pit. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, today's Friday, so we did this Wednesday afternoon. Last night it was sort of raining a bit, and we, we got busy. Uh, so it got dark quick, but Friday morning we're going to open it up. This is the, another one that the boys made. Dio's um, charcoal design. So we're going to try that again later. Uh, right, lift it off. Come on. Last night we were we closed the hole up yesterday afternoon, didn't we? Yeah, we don't need any air uh, in. So once it gets so, really hot, then yeah. you got to close it off. Yeah, if 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 you see smoke and like a little bit smoke, like a, just take everything out and close everything up. We don't yeah. need any air in. Yeah. So it's no air in, no fire in there. Yeah. Just charcoal left. Yeah. So about uh, 
yesterday afternoon. What time did we close it off? It was about afternoon, about after lunch, wasn't it? Yeah, twenty four hours. Been... Yeah, then we close after, it off, yeah, and then off so no air at all, wasn't yeah, it? No air at all. <coughs> oh, look at that. that! That's sort of was green, half green timber. And oh, I should have got a video last night because we cooked tomahawk steaks last night, yeah, eh? Yeah. On this, on the charcoal from you made again. before. So um, you can take some of this with you. You're camping tonight, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Take some of this with you. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good chunk, eh? Yeah. Break, you can break them open a bit, can you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that. Um, it is, it's charcoal. So that's enough there for a couple of bags. And yeah. you, Dio, you cook in this every day in Thailand, do you? Yeah. Every day, charcoal. Yeah. You You're cooking need, for this every day. Stuff. Yeah. Get um, charcoal. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. That works yeah. great. This time, we're gonna try to put on yeah. that drum. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You see. It. On Sunday or something, we'll have a go with a drum. Yeah. That'll be easier, right? We don't have to put all yeah. the dirt on. Yeah. It's make it easier. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Look at that. Still a bit warm in here. That's sort of good chunks you want, you know, something like that. Yeah, it's great. Well, here we go. All right, so we've got the fire going, and this is Toddy's Dio's charcoal. It's not Toddy's charcoal, it's Dio's charcoal. This is charcoal, man. Look at this. Danny, how's Dio's charcoal? Yeah, good, good, good. Good, good or what? Awesome. Good. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Something out there. Well, that's what it's about. Charcoal, cooking dinner. Yeah, yeah, cool, man. Can you put the sauce in? Maybe cheese. Put the sauce in. That's it. Still on the job? Is it mine? Oh, thank you. Good on you. Where is the glory?